of Africa. We all walk the road of pain. How do you see the sunlight? If you can't appreciate the rain. So here's to a new beginning. And here's to a glorious end. We'll strive for a better tomorrow. Make go wrong and make go right. Celebrate your life. Is there something good right where you are right now? So open up your window. There's a lightning in the sky. Open up your heart and embrace the sun. Stop asking why, why. We all walk the road of faith. CSR in Africa is different from CSR in Europe or in America because it has different driving forces. The strength of regulation encourages improved environmental performance and ethical business practices. However, it is also noted that the rate of returns on foreign investments in Africa is higher. Africa has one billion people, 30 million square kilometers of land, and is endowed with vast natural resources and an economy likely at a takeoff stage similar to Asia two decades ago. Between 2002 and 2007, Pan-African growth was over 5% annually. Companies from China, India, and many other countries are aggressively investing in Africa. The extent of the challenge for CSR in Africa becomes even clearer when we are reminded of the scale of social needs that still exist despite decades of aid and development efforts. Life expectancy in Africa is still only 50 years and as low as 38 years in some countries. Gross national income per capita averages 650 US dollars and the adult literacy rate is less than 20% in some countries according to the World Bank report in 2004. At the current pace of development, Sub-Saharan Africa would not reach the MDGs, Millennium Development Goals for Poverty Reduction, until 2147, and for child mortality until 2165. Wow. I should be grey by then. And as for HIV, AIDS, and hunger, trends in the region are heading up and not down, according to a UNDP report in 2004 as well. This plenary, therefore, seeks to highlight the critical need to go beyond theoretical underpinnings to factual and debatable discussions on the role clearly, def on the role clearly defined CSR initiatives can play in advancing African economies. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the participants for this session to come up and take their seats on the stage. I'd start by inviting the chair of this session, Dr. Jumoke Oduole. Can we put our hands together for her? She's the executive director of the Kurama Foundation. And the Kurama Foundation is a partner organization to the ARCSR. The first speaker who is not yet here is Dr. Ayo Teriba, the CEO of Economic Associates, and is expected to speak on the evolving trends in Africa and how these trends strengthen economies. Dr. Wayne Weiser is the second speaker. He's a founder of CSR International, amongst many other things. He's an author, speaker, and I think I'll allow him add the others when he comes up. If I do that, he'll have to pay me. So I'd invite Dr. Weiser, who will speak on the age of responsibility. Can Africa leapfrog to CSR 2.0? Dr. Weiser, can we put our hands together for him, please? 
next and certainly not last and certainly far from the least is Dakpo Iwoli. I'm always tempted to say Dr. Dakpo Iwoli. He's the executive director of CAPS Consult, that's the Center for African Peace and Policy Studies. He's going to speak on the implications of CSR for poverty reduction and development. Dakpo, please come. Can we put our hands together for him? All right, so my work is done this morning. I will hand over to the session chair to lead us through this session. Dr. Duoli. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for braving the weather or getting out of your